comes Mark. He's a power player. He hits the ball hard. Yes. Good rally here to start the game. Looks like a couple of ceiling ball. Ceiling ball rally going here now. Fourth shot. Set up for Cather. He misses it. Skip. Point candy. Mark Candy serving one nothing. Just starting game one of this match. Mark Candy versus John Cather. Do you know what division these guys are in? Is that it's three wall? I think that was a three wall. I do too. I think it was a three wall. Um, this is a uh, 50 A. 50, okay. 50 and over, age A. They're going to replay that, or second serve. Set up for Mark. They're going to play that. Yep, ball was up. Hinder ball. Going to replay Mark Candy serving at 1-0. One, one Good return by John. Oh. Mark's going to play through that. Sure looks like it. It's going to be a setup for John. What's he going to do with it? Eight walls. Wow. Still in play. Good get. Bouncing high. Cuts it off. And that's going to set up for Mark Candy. Big rally. Long run there. Side out. My friend Rick brought us uh, uh, some smoothies. Well, that's that's really nice. Yeah, fantastic. I, I had one already. He brought me two. Oh. Looks like he rolled an ankle, mm -mm. his right ankle. So John's uh, slow to get up. He lost the serve. Injury timeout or no? It doesn't look like it. Looks like he's going to walk it off. He's going to play through it. Mark Candy serving 1-0. There's the kill. 2 nothing, Mark Candy. All right, well, I wonder if he's got anything other than the uh, drive Z for serves. Mm. I don't think we're going to see him hit much else. Now, I, I can't think I've ever seen him hit anything but the drive Z. But the, he, he uh, starts in that left corner and, and has sort of a, uh, a, a tomahawk movement to his, to his wrist, and he gets himself loaded up and... That's what he always does. Steps into it and it goes. And as we were talking about it, he hit a uh, drive serve to the forehand side of John Cather, which resulted in a side out and now a point. So the score is one to one. One serves one. Little bit short. Second serve. I don't think John is expecting to have much good good action off that side wall. He cut that one off. He did, and he almost short changed himself. Mm, yeah, nice yeah. pass. Well, he did have a bite at the apple and put himself into that position in that corner, put himself in jail. Z serve to Mark's forehand. A little bit of push on the hip there. Yeah, a little bump, bumping in the middle. That is uh, side up, side out. Some guys get incredibly unhappy if you took your hand on them that way he just did, my, uh, John just did there. I let it go about six or seven times before I say something. I had a, um, I had kind of an incident at state doubles in December. Oh, really? Yeah. What happened? I was uh, aggravated by someone pushing off of me. 
All right, the Score players. Score correction, 2-2. Two, 2-2, two. Oh. Two, two. that's good. No, no, it goes the other way. There you go. That's a good serve. That's a point. It is. Basically, work, the, the scoreboard works the same way as like a, um, a scorecard where you're either checking or flipping the gotcha. board every time. I got gotcha. you. It's been a while. It's been a while since I uh, kept score at basketball, but I've done that in the past. And that's uh, keeping the book and keeping the board. Mm -hmm. It's a lot to balance. It is. It is. The, that, the concept of the scoreboard is that you don't really have to remember who's serving. It'll it'll remember that stuff for you. And I think it's a I think it's a beautiful device. I, it's so useful. It probably minimizes distractions for the broadcasters because no one's asking them the uh, score. I'm sorry. What was the question? Yes, I am done with that cup. Thank you very kindly. If you're uh, collecting for me, I appreciate that. The score is now five serves to two. Very effective drive serve that died on the back wall. Makes it now 6-2, Candy. Can you hear me? Yes, what? It's going to be a setup for Mark. Yes, I know. I know. Mike Semenko. Mike Semenko. 7-2 as Cather piles that one into the ground. All right, I just got to cover this, Jen. Mark Candy serving seven to two. He took a glance over here to make sure I had the score right, so they're keeping us honest. That is, that's the um, preferred technique, is that all we're trying to do is to make that match whatever they're calling in the court, and since we can't hear them. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, that's it, um, yeah, the, I, I kind of thought my way through this. I wanted to ha talk to the, the RAM board about m possibly adding uh, some language to our our charter for the for the uh, official rules that says, look, the official rules don't mention scoreboard, but they do say that the, the referee will always call the score and that if there's no referee, then the players will call the score, which I think, you know, equates to the same thing as... Um, you know, having a scoreboard and, and manipulating it. You, you know what? It, it really is. And it's, it's just that the players are multitasking, keeping track of their own scores as well. Right, right. So the, the idea is that if they want to, they can use that device to help them remember the score while they're in the rally. And uh, all they have to do is just make sure they check it after every single rally and that it agrees with what, you know, what they're doing. You know, I didn't. I didn't think about it that way, but it does help the player because they don't have to keep track of the score. Right. It's like it, if you check it before the rally starts and you know it's right, then later you can check it at the end of the rally and and uh, it'll remind you what what you had called. The other thing that I find very um, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, for thought, for thoughtful, uh, good plan mm -hmm. is the fact that you had the common sense, not the common sense, the uncommon sense to put the numbers on both sides mm -hmm. so that the players could see the numbers in the court and the uh, we can see it too and the fans can see it sitting behind us. So that that's great. And, and now that you told me I have to take an action on the board every rally, uh -huh. I seem to be getting it. 9-2, Mark Candy serving. The signature drive Z. Barely makes it to the front. Nice pass. Very powerful pass shot by Mark. So 10-2, the, the score, scoreboard is kind of blown out, but the game itself is, is closer than that. John's got to figure out a way to get his fair share of these points. Skip. Oh, that, he, he's that's off. It. He's off a little bit. Yep. It's not his first skip this this round. Eleven serves two. So John, you're a big beer and aficionado. What are we what are we drinking or what are you drinking here today? T today I am uh, drinking Bell's Two Hearted Ale, Bell's brewery from Kalamazoo, Michigan. I like to say they're one of the, the folks that started it all because they were doing craft beer in the late 80s mm -hmm. and early 90s, maybe as, maybe even in the mid-80s. Everybody drinks their Oberon. 
Oberon's their popular summer style. Two Hearted is a uh, uh, Two Hearted is a um, India pa India Pale Ale. Yeah, the, I've had the Two Hearted and I do I do enjoy it. I I did have a glass of beer earlier today, and uh, I I think I did have the the Two Hearted. Is what I think I had. You know, it's a and I have to tell you, it's a bargain because um, usually it's five or six bucks a pint at home, and I got a 20 ouncer here going for five dollars here at the tiebreaker lounge in Davison, Michigan. The uh, the last several tournaments we've had here, the staff has done such a such a good job with the food and with the, uh, the, the running the bar. Is John going to be all right? Yeah, he uh, went down hard there. He missed the ball right. with the good. racket. He's, he's putting everything he's got into every rally. He's going to have to figure something out. 11-4 is getting out of hand. What is it? What is that called, I Dave? think he hit it with his racket. That's called a side out is what that's called. He touched that wall with his racket. That is a side out. Getting a little close here in the middle, too. Maybe some hinders called. Um, you know, the, the players the players oftentimes don't realize that the rule book is on their side, and so they think, well, I'll just be reasonable, which, you know, he is. He's being reasonable. That's good. But when the rule book says... You absolutely cannot hit the ball with your racket like that. That's, uh, you know. And I would say that most players don't don't know that ro rule. Yeah. I know I didn't know the rule. Um, yeah, but that, that's no excuse for not doing the right thing. Yeah. That's wow, there's a that's 14. That's a great serve. John's having a hard time with that serve. They're, they're unpredict unpredictably checking up here on the side wall and dying at the back wall. It's a tough, tough serve. It's probably, what, three or four inches maybe within it's hitting right at near the crack? Yeah, not much more than that. It's a, it's a very good serve. And just Switches to keep him on his toes, he changes it up. And we oh. all knew that shot was going to go it. there. Game one, Game Mark one. Candy. No, you don't want to get it warm. Oh, that's a good point. It's a good drive serve. It was just barely a legal serve. we got a good rally going here. Set up for Mark. That's a good poke. John's doing a good job moving John, uh, Mark around the court. Set up. Nice get. Off the back wall. Oop, between the legs. Skip ceiling. These guys are going to be tired. They're making me tired. <laughs> yeah, that was a long rally. Definitely. Here comes Adam Deem in the house. Adam's, Adam's here from Team Ectalon. Oh, gets tagged. That ball kicked. I don't even know if that ball was, was good. It may have been long. Is it still 0-0? I believe it is. I hope, hopefully the guys will correct us if the score is wrong. Hope, I, don't, I haven't, did not talk to them before the match began, and I need cover art. I need to get a photograph of them. You sure do, so that the uh, the recording can have their faces on it. Yep. Okay, my board's all out of whack. Okay, here we go. It's one nothing. Mark Candy jo over uh, over John Catherine game one. Here we are at one nothing in game two. That's good serve. I thought it was good too. It was good. John was so surprised by that he didn't even, didn't even notice if it was good or not. <laughs> yeah, I can't see any discernible differences in Mark's uh, body language when he goes to the Z versus the drive, and uh, that's that's a good cover. There is a lot of fly balls in this match. Skip. Yeah, well, John John took that at chest height, and he had plenty of opportunity to let it drop into his strike zone. I think he's just uh, doesn't want to have to chase too far after it. I'm not sure. But, uh, That's going to be tough, and Mark returns it. That surprises me. That was a great get. There's a good shot right there. Wallpaper. Yep. That is tough. So that's a side out. Mark Candy coming in 2-0.
It's good. I thought John's shot was good. Yes, John's shot was good. I didn't see Mark's. Um, Mark just kind of dumped it in the front, knowing that John was stuck here in the back, recovering from his long run. Okay. A couple of really good gets. Um, no one's jumping in to <laughs> serve the ball again. I think they're both <laughs> out of breath. Yeah. Again, this is a reminder, this is men's 50 A age. That's a great return. Wallpaper in the back corner. Set up. Backhand. Nice pass. Mark gets a racket on it, but he can't get it back to the front wall. I think he made contact about, like, what, three or four inches from the back wall. It was. It was. That ball died, and Mark had to chase it. It, it, was, it was tough. And he gets a racket on this one off the back wall and gets Perfect. passed by John. So uh, I believe the score is now 3-2. to two. Three to one. Okay, three to one. I got him. And here we have a technical delay that John Leggett's causing. Yeah, flipping them back, taking back a point is actually a little bit more awkward than uh, than what I would like. The way that that scoreboard is set up doesn't look like it should be, but it tends to be. All right. I have to Side say, that, that's some real nice craft, craftsmanship there. I built it as cheap as I could. Mr. But Dave, that is beautiful. <laughs> I, that's so effective. Point that's four a, one. It's a nice serve, real nice serve. In my original design drawing, the sign said s server and then had a little arrow pointing to the other side. <laughs> But uh, you, you went with receiver, eh? Everybody can figure that out. Yeah, you know, it's like uh, that way you don't need to have a little arrow pointing some other which way, you know. It's just it's like, but you have to, the purpose of the sign is to, to block out so you can't flip that card. You know what? Now that makes perfect sense to me. That should be in the training documentation because that makes perfect sense. It incents you to, to affect the card on the other side. Right. Right, so now, you can flip one, you can't flip the other. Right? Now, whose brain works like that? <laughs> Who can think of that? That's amazing. I, my brain doesn't work that way. That's why I admire well, that. I think we got the, the, the sign flipped back the rather wrong uh, which right. One right. serving four is right? He's two. got two, okay. All right. All right, I'm going to stop looking at you and stop trying to tell <laughs> stories. All right. Just keep score. Watch racquetball. Oh, he framed it. That's yeah. a ni nice serve. It cracked on the side wall here, and, and Mark didn't gauge it correctly off the back wall, so he couldn't get a racket on it. Yeah. 3-4. Dave, I couldn't help but notice I didn't see your name in the uh, draws this today. Uh, no, I'm not playing singles. I, I'm, I'm in chemotherapy, and, and uh, I don't have any stamina for singles. Oh, I, I, oh. Didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. What? My hair is normally not bald. Normally I have hair. So, yeah, this chemo, uh, after about two weeks, it suddenly all fell out at once. In a period of like three days, just boom, like just in massive handfuls. I, uh, that's, that's real tough to deal with. Yeah, you know, man, lots of guys are bald. I don't mind. It's just, you know, one of those things that you don't know what's going to happen in the past. In the past, it's uh, been a very gradual you know, thing that eventually gets to the point where you end up having to shave the head because it's so funny and patchy. In this case, it just happened all at once. It's just different. But, I mean, every time you do chemo, they give you different drugs. They, they change the recipe all the time. Trying to knock it down, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's always custom. It's always custom. Well, I, I can't wait to see you back on the courts. I always enjoy spending time with you on the courts. Well, I appreciate that. I've, I've always enjoyed playing with you, too. Um, I would normally, they do have some doubles divisions, and I would normally play doubles. Um, but if I, they're going to run their doubles tomorrow, right when I need to be at the booth for the finals, you know. And I will tell you, two doubles starts at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, and the, and the finals is at 4. We have a full day of racquetball tomorrow as well. Mm-hmm. So for the sake of the broadcast, I decided I would take it off. But the last tournament I, I played. Now let's, uh, let's talk about Jen being absent from this uh, 
from this draw because uh, I, I thought I saw on social media that she wasn't playing because she had taken a ball to the thigh <laughs> earlier this week. Oh, that's a, that's a handy excuse. I've never heard of missing Jen, racquetball from that. Jen does not, doesn't play singles at oh, all. Oh, that's what it is. That's and, what it is. And so, yeah, she, she bowed out of the doubles because of that because I think that she didn't really expect there was going to be much in the way of great doubles today. This yeah, I think there was, a, I think there was a, a few people or a few doubles teams in uh, mixed. Right. And that started today. I think it concluded today, too. Oh, okay, so Jen really uh, enjoys doubles more than singles. And yeah, she doesn't play singles at all. As far as she's concerned, it's not no interest in the sport in singles. Whereas to me, I like I like singles just as much. So, timeout, Mark Candy, at uh, three serving five. When we come back, so here all we right. are, here we are in game two. Game one was won by Mark Candy, but in game two here, John Cather three is three serving five. That's right. All right, short serve. Might help if I were to man the camera, sir. Sorry, I, I, I get distracted easily. I have to tell you the uh, concurrent activities that need to occur. Oh my God. Is that good or skip? I did not see. I, I thought see. it skipped. Came off the heel of his racket. A lot of pace. Four or five. Yep. I didn't mean to talk over you, John. What's, we were saying concurrent no, no, no. activity? All, all I, no, I was gonna say. John looks really uh, intense. He looks like he is uh, getting fired up. And I think you're going to see some momentum shift go his way. It's a great kill. And he did it blindly. He almost he almost ran it into the back of John. Mm -hmm. uh, John should have yielded one way or the other. He, he, he set himself up right in front of the line of the ball. That's not and you know, proper. I, no I notice varying degrees of awareness as to how somebody's setting up for the shot. Depending on the skill level of the folks playing, um, I've only recently come to uh, appreciate the value of watching your opponent set up for the shot so you can anticipate what kind of shot they're going to take. Mm -hmm. um, that is something that, that is huge when it comes to seeing if somebody's going to hit it to the ceiling or are they setting up for a kill shot. Oh. Most guys don't have the hands to be able to this guy's a shot to the very last instant, and uh, and that's that's a really uh, a rare skill that I, I appreciate a lot when I watch other the pros and, and the guys the top guys that can do that that can. They have all the tricks. Yeah. They have they have the touch. They've got the power. They've got the angles. That's a good shot. I thought it was good too. Four serves five. John is definitely my in this game a lot more than the last one. Long. You, know, you know, they're hitting the ball hard. Both of them are power players. Second serve, drive Z. What's up? We got jammed up with the root in uh, yeah. Hinderland. Yes. Oh, nice pass. And that's a point for Cather. 5-5. Five, five. So it's a setup for Cather. He puts it right on Candy's racket. Candy's quick to draw, and he gets passed again. 6-5, Cather. So, John, I just had a conversation with uh, Jen Amir. We're going to um, make this the last match of the day for, for the broadcast court um, because she and I both have an obligation to uh, go to the the, uh, the the banquet tonight. I think the banquet's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah. So we, we have to make sure that we have time enough to tear down this equipment and uh, store it in the lock in the secure facility before we, uh, before we go change our clothes and... and uh, all that stuff. So. So if we go to a game three, we're going to have time for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. There's. They said that there, there probably will be another game that will be played on this court, but oh, I, I gotcha. we won't have time enough to broadcast it and take care of our other responsibilities. Oh, good, excellent. So. Well, that's uh, good to have a plan. Yeah. So for those of you watching, this will be our final broadcast match of the day. 
Set up Mark Candy to his backhand. Oh, man. And he goes with the pass, and John's flat-footed. Point for Candy now at 6-6 here in game two. You know, I hate to say, as much as John likes to spank the ball hard, I would I would challenge him to, to, to do a soft touch in front of me. Like, I, I dare you. Go ahead. Yep. It takes, like you said, it takes hands to do that. I've noticed with, with Candy's play, he seems to want to wait um, to see what his shot does, and he's expecting it to roll out. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of flat-footed and surprised when his opponent returns the ball. And I think he's laid out of the shoot, retrieving the um, response that comes from the opponent. Take a look. So he's going to watch this shot, and he'll be surprised if uh, mm -hmm. John got it, but he didn't. Uncontested. Yeah, see, I would have stepped in on that and called the hinder. I would have too because, you know, Mark Mark was in the way, and, and John, that ball was up. That ball bounced handily off the back wall. All right. Yeah, in, a, in, a, in a tournament with a referee, you could have drawn a penalty hinder out of that one. Yep, that's Close right. Close enough. 8-6, and we got a four-shot rally in progress. Good shot. A no-nonsense return yeah. from John Cather serving at 6-8. Nice serve. Wrap around. And, and Mark skipped it on the way up. So now it's a 7 serving 8. Off the back wall, set up for Candy. Off the back wall again. There's your soft shot. There's your soft shot. Yeah, he proved me wrong. He did hit it very nice. Easy little touch. And John's taking a little extra time to get in the box. He's going to call a timeout. Right. And, we'll, and we'll be right back. Okay. Here we go. Mm -hmm. and, and we're back from our break. Mark Candy with his signature drive Z serve to the backhand of John Cather in game two. It's another point for Candy. Now 9-7. That one is dead on in the corner, right at the back crack. If that were outdoor, that would be what we call that, out the, out the door on the seam right there, you know? You know, speaking of outdoor, it's been a long winter. I can't wait to get outside. Oh, my. That's what I've been hearing from all the outdoor players myself, is uh, eager to uh, feel a little sun on your face when you're, uh, when you're playing this game. That's a skip. And I have to tell you, Dave, um, the first year I played outdoor racquetball, mm -hmm. I brought my skill level up of one and a half levels because uh, it forces you to cut the ball off and it forces you to to take better shots. Um, and I think you get quicker. That's an, a down the line, another point, authoritative point from, from Mark. 11 serving seven now. They just had a big event down in, uh, I believe near Fort Lauderdale, Florida. They drew a two to 300 players. A lot With of folks. That many? Wow, yeah, that's uh, nice. I think around a dozen folks from Michigan ended up going there as well. <laughs> Uh-oh. What happened there? Okay, we're back. So John John took it off the back wall, and he tried to return. He hit Mark in the head or the side of the head near oh the glasses. My. So the ball's a little wet, and uh, Mark's a, a little rattled. So outdoor racquetball. You get the radio going. You get a cooler with your favorite beverages, and you get some sunshine and some sunglasses that are eye guards, and it's a good time. I, you know, I, I think that in my, my interpretation of the game, the outdoor racquetball is sort of a hybrid between tennis and racquetball because you're playing over the baseline a lot. You know, you're, you're you have to play behind the baseline occasionally. You just can't come into the court like you do in racquetball. No, you're you're right, and and I think uh, I always struggle in the month of September when we come back indoors <laughs> for our leagues and whatnot. I struggle because I feel like I'm playing racquetball in a shoebox because out, outdoor does not feel that way. Outdoor is very open. Mm -hmm. You're sometimes shooting the ball from 55 or 60 feet, yeah. and there's no better satisfaction than getting a roll out from that distance. Yeah, that's, uh, it's like there's no comparison to anything else in this game. It, the indoor game has no corollary to that. 
And that's a point for John Cather. We're now at uh, eight serving 13. He's not going down without a fight. Long serve. Oh, that's a skip. Straight down. Nine serves to 13. That's, a, serve. that's an uncontested ace. 10-13. This mic is hot. Would you like to jump on, jump in? Oh, she says, I don't want it to be hot, huh? All right. Fine. Plug it on up. 10 serves 13. John Cather to Mark Candy here in game two. Mm. She's trying to rip my mic out, out of my head here. I, I wish you had seen that because I thought it was a two-bounce get. Yeah, I'm sorry. Jennifer is uh, yanking on me here. It is 20 feet. <laughs> yeah, we our handheld microphone has plenty of cable. It's another ace serve. That was a good foot over, not even close. Good. Time out, Mark Candy. I'm not entirely sure that we can do outdoor justice with a broadcast. Well, and you know, some of the outdoor that happens in California and Florida, that's a short wall. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, we got long wall courts here in Michigan. Now, a big part of the problem is the lighting. Um, yep. With sunlight, natural sunlight, um, cameras see the, the shadows as, as inky black. And so they, they completely lose all the detail in the, sh in the shadow. Oh, I didn't even think about the way the environment would impact the cameras. Yeah. And, and, and another part of it is that because the, of the depth of play behind the baseline, you can't just put a camera in the back of the court. People are playing back there. That's right. You know um, what? I think outdoor creates a lot of challenges. It does. It does. What? And he, here we are with another change of serve. John Cather now serving to Mark Candy 13 13 in game two. 13 13. Wow. Dead tie. Two S points to go. Set up for John. Did he roll it? He rolled it. It looked like he caught it a little thick. He maybe stood on the racket a little second longer than it should have. I don't know. I mean, it sounded like he framed it to me, sort of. But uh, yeah, well, yeah, he obviously didn't didn't carry it. Certainly not intentionally. 14, 13. The end result was good, and it looks like we're we're staring down the the tunnel, Five. looking at a tiebreaker. Yeah, one more point to, to tiebreak time. Oh, that's a that and that's Mark a penalty hinder. So they if they they can call that, but we can't. No, we don't call that. He's going to replay it. That's I mean, right. yeah, that's a uh, several times today. There's been contention over whether or not plays should be avoidable, and I have had conversations with the players on and off the court, but it's not up to me. That's I, correct. I but can tell them what the rules say. I do know the rules inside out, but uh, it's up to them to make the call. You know, that is something I'd like to compliment you on, Dave, is is your knowledge of the rules, because I've noticed that that you absolutely are uh, an advocate that's of the good. rules and. and and there's uh, game two. We're going to go into a tiebreaker. We'll yeah. be right back. So I'm going to restart this. We're going to have a tiebreak coming up. The recording is now running. Both guys are uh, are still kind of posturing a little bit. I, I thought that he, Mark was going to go ahead and start serving right there. He does he does have that a quick motion. Yeah, he's a, he's a quick server. A little fist bump here to start game three offered by Mark. Mm-hmm. You know, not a lot of contention in this game. These guys have both um, yielded the, the space to each other pretty well. You, you know, if you're here for the right reasons, to have fun and for the camaraderie and the, the brotherhood of racquetball, mm -hmm. then uh, winning is nice, but it's, it's not a requirement. Zero, zero. Skip ball, that one up quick. and John. Jelly. Yep, point two zero. Buying around. I'm on. It's not me. Two. 
Two Hearted <laughs> Ale. <laughs> two Heart. I love that. Finger gesture to the heart. Yeah? I wish I would uh, take credit for that, but it's not my gig. Uh, somebody made it up. And uh, John just pointed over to re remind me I missed a point, and mm. it is uh, two nothing. Or in this case, Mark serving at zero serves two. We're watching his signature drive Z to the backhand. Oh, that's a good get. No, no. All right. I didn't see it. I, I yeah. Uncontested. Nope. It's a short serve. Short serve. They're looking to us. I'm going to call it short. It's not my job to ref. It's Very not, frequent. It's not my job to broadcast. I'm just here having fun. Well, it's funny, you know. Um, broadcasting has its own distractions to it. And uh, and so it actually impinges on your ability to, to you know, to pit, add your two cents to the call. You know, I would... I would I ha absolutely have some appreciation for the concurrent tasks that need to occur, right? You need to keep track of the score. Right. You're running the cameras, and you're doing commentary, and you're making sure the technology's working. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's a lot of things. The, uh, the thing that people all ask for and they really, really want is instant replay. Oh my gosh! Don't you need a third or a fourth person to do that? Um, yeah, basically a third person, for sure. And um, can you do that on the existing cameras, or do you do that with uh, a shoulder health camera? Um, the the technology does not exist in a lot of respects. Most most software packages will not offer it. Uh, I do have I have a package that I'm I'm uh, testing right now that, that includes instant replay. But as far as I know, it's the only one under twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, now you're now you're out of the hobbyist realm and you're into professional right. gear. Right, you're into uh, what they they consider that a budget package, though. Jeez, <laughs> wow. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, you know, that's never never going to be in my budget. Yeah. Uh, is that good? Cather pushes Candy out of the front court. Oh, that's a kill. With a ceiling ball and. They exchange a couple of shots, and it results in a setup and a kill by Mark. 4-2, four, yeah. four, Mark Candy here in the tiebreaker. 4-2. You know, I will tell you, it, it helps me just to not look at anybody and just focus on mm -hmm. talking and focus on the match. Oh, they got a clubhouse bounce. John Cather did, and it's a side out. Coming in at two serves four. So you see there, I took a few minutes to have a chit chat with Jen, and I missed a scoring uh, moment, and John reminded me that I missed it. 4-4? Four, four. Yeah, it's 4-4. Four, four. We shouldn't have to have the players remind us. Hmm. But you know, the club's clearing out, getting ready for the banquet. Ooh, crack drive serve. serve. Crack. That is, that is the, the ace serve that I work on. I tell you the truth. Um, Oh, hey, how are you? Look at Adam Deem all dressed up. Purple shirt and khakis and dress shoes. And he's got he's got socks like you've never seen. All right. Hey, John, I've stolen Dave's microphone. Whoops. And you screwed up the score. No, I didn't. Both uh -oh. players just looked at the board and it's fine. Did they? Yeah, so don't try to mess with me. That's a long serve. Second serve. Six serves for John Cather here in game three, the tiebreaker. It's going to be a setup to his backhand. Uh oh. This is a junk rally. <laughs> oh. Finished with a junk shot, which results. 
Oh. Thank you. Cheers. It's nice when I get random select beverages delivered. Random select beverages. That's a short and a screen serve, but they're going to play through it. Oh, right out of his reach. John Cather goes up. Eight to four. Mark Candy bangs the glass with his displeasure. Oh, that's nice. It is a nice stretch by Mark to force the side out. He's coming in at four, serving eight. Needs to make a move here in the tie break. I thought it was short. I wasn't paying attention. I'm not sure why they uh, Im have implied we are the referees as yes, well. Yes, yes. I, we, Dave and I have uh, commented on that before. That the assumption is that, uh, is that we know. Well, the assumption is that we know what's going on, which you know, that's debatable anyway. Well, but now Dave is what I call. I'll call him a rules snob. Dave he's is. Very, he's very knowledgeable. Yes. He plays by the book. Yes. Um, however, you know, observing and interpreting the rules, they're gonna they're gonna ask me my opinion. I didn't see it, and it looks like it's gonna be a, another point for John Cather here. Nine serves four in the tiebreaker. He lost game one. He came back with a vengeance in game two. And he's setting up. He's setting up right now. Setting up to win game three in the tiebreaker. This is the men's 50A division. That one was short. It looks like they're going to play it. Good night, Irene. 11-4 in the final. All right.